If you bought the cheapest Steam Deck, you don't have to suffer anymore. So it feels good to have done literally every single mod to the Steam Deck that I possibly could. So I'm wondering what's next? Oh. So one of the major advantages that Valve has with the Steam Deck is that they have partnered up with iFixit to bring repair parts. From the joysticks that you can actually replace to things like the fan or what we're gonna be looking at today, the screen upgrade that we can make to my Steam Deck because I had to purchase this from the deep dark pirated web of ungodly places like eBay in order for me to get a Steam Deck on time. I actually literally just bought the one I reserved last year. It should be here this week, Kyler. So fixing the things that you've broken on your Steam Deck with iFixit is going to be easy, or one of the main things that people talked about when iFixit revealed that they're going to be selling the matte screen for the Steam Deck is the fact that you can buy the cheapest Steam Deck at $399, buy the matte screen for an extra $100, and then for $500, you have essentially what was the main reason people were upgrading to the 512 gig version of the Steam Deck. You don't have as much storage, but with a lot of people finding out that a micro SD card is good enough on the Steam Deck, you can actually be all in for the best Steam Deck cheaper than what Valve is selling it for. You save 150 bucks by going the DIY route, which, it comes with a little complication, and as a semi-competent repair person myself, this is gonna be the everyman's guide of how to upgrade your Steam Deck screen, because I'm by far not a professional, so I, hopefully I give you some realistic inputs to how you can do this. So I actually haven't seen the matte screen in person since I've only been able to play with the cheap one, but you can see it is a very reflective thing. Look, you can see Kyler holding the camera. Look at him. That's Kyler right there, hi! Oh, that is way more matte. Obviously still reflective, you can see Kyler, but you can see that it's uh, dispersing the light that's being shown as opposed to the Steam Deck, which clearly reflects it to you. Like you can see the definition of the little rectangular light, whereas this is a little bit more spread out, which I can still see myself, but it is definitely better. I'm excited for this. This is. Oh yeah, just even the side-by-side -side right here, yeah. And while Steam Decks with upgraded screens are nice, you know what's nicer? Today's video sponsor Drop because they're giving away a whole PC in their giveaway collaborating with NZXT. They've got a whole bunch of great prizes for you at the link in the video description if you wanna check it out. The grand prize winner is gonna have a 2000 plus dollar value on an NZXT Streaming Plus PC, an NZXT Function Keyboard where you choose the size and case color, but you get drop switches and keycaps to customize it. You get an NZXT lift mouse, mouse pad, and then the Drop Plus Epos PC38X gaming headset, which I absolutely love. My kids have been using for years at this point. This is a phenomenal giveaway. Second place is that function keyboard with the mouse, the mouse pad, and the gaming headset. And then third place is definitely not something to sleep on. It's a drop icon collection keyboard of your choice. It These things look phenomenal. I am super jealous. You check the link in the video description to enter into the giveaway. It's going to be running until July 13th of 2022. So you only have a little less than a week to enter, but big thanks to Drop for sponsoring today's video, for providing this giveaway for our community. This is a lot of great stuff. This stuff looks phenomenal. NZXT's peripherals mixed with Drop's keycaps and key switches. Oh, I'm jealous. Kyler, can you bring me my Drop keyboard so I can touch it? This is not the icon one, but this is an enter. This has the holy pandas and oh my goodness, drop. Great sponsor, check them out, the link in the video description. A giveaway, that's the sponsor, check it out. So the first step in any Steam Deck thing you're ever gonna do, remove the SD card, cause it'll come flying out if you don't take it out. Remove the back screws on the back panel and then just pop the back panel off. I never have the screws in my back panel. Additionally, your Steam Deck will have this installed with a little piece of metal. You should unscrew that and then take this off. I haven't put mine back. I know it's actually shortening the lifespan of my Steam Deck, but this is our experimental Steam Deck that I am going to kill. <laughs> it's going to happen. We know it is. I almost already ruined the M.2 port the other day. For science, then most importantly, you disconnect the battery because you do not want to have any electrical discharge while you're working on this, especially since getting to the screen requires going through a whole lot of components here. But thankfully, iFixit provides you with the parts and then also the eye opener kit for you to be able to work on everything. We have 
nearly every tool. So when you buy the screen for $100, this comes with it. And this is not sponsored by iFixit. M.2 comes out next. I have installed this nifty little quick connect because I've been messing with the M.2 so much on my Steam Deck. Use a pair of tweezers to remove the sticker from the top edge of the fan. I haven't done that. Okay, so the sticker needs to come off. So does the heat sink that's underneath. And that is just a few screws to get that off. And as is the case in any repair that you make, you wanna make sure that you put your screws to the side where you're gonna remember. I didn't peel the sticker off. I just peeled it off as it was coming off. And there, it's the little bit of thermal paste that's underneath. So we could clean that, but I'm, I think I'm just gonna keep the original thermal paste on. That should be enough. That doesn't look like we'll run into any issues. Now we have to disconnect the fan, which is this little connector right here. My, look at that, that's so tiny. Use a pair of tweezers to grip the edges of the fan connector and pull it up by the connector. Oh man, my hands are way bigger than this. Okay, that can't... <sighs> <laughs> These tiny wires are gonna be the death of me. Look at my hand compared to the Steam Deck. Like, working on this scale is not normal for me. Use a pair of tweezers to remove the Wi-Fi shield tape. Oh, the board's moving. Use a pair of tweezers to grip the edges of the speaker connector. That guy, that's the speaker connector that needs to come up. That was easy. A pair of tweezers to grip the antenna connector. Grab it at the base and pull straight up. Straight up. That's one. Got it, second one. Use the pointed end of the spudger to lift up the small locking flap on the display cable's ZIF connector. This guy, got it. Use a pair of tweezers to get this out. There's a pull tab, done. Disconnect the audio cable. Where's that? Up here. Unlock it, slide the cable out of its connector. Oh man, this one's tricky. Cause the pull tab's down there and it's at like a firm 90 degree angle. Got it. I always wonder with these repair things, like how much is necessary? And then when you get to it, you realize, oh, I didn't have to do all of that. This is how you break stuff. These small little ribbon cables. These are so easy to damage. I'm not confident I didn't break my audio there. SIF connector on the DB. This guy, disconnect the button board. Oh, there's one over here. Which one's that? Oh, is it this one? I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. So then there is allegedly a screw down here, but I must have removed that at some point because it's not here for me now. So there's a screw down here and then these two up here to remove this entire board. So shout out not only to iFixit for partnering with Valve on the repairability for the Steam Deck, but also shout out to Valve for just using like normal Phillips screws instead of like Torx security screws because it makes the repair, repair process so much easier and iFixit doesn't have to ship you a whole kit in order to get all of that done. So now it is the time to remove the motherboard. So the audio cable attaches to the underside of the board. We don't have to disconnect that, but I'm going to so that way I can just move this out of the way. I guess I could just move it out of the way. That's use a pair of tweezers to pull back the sticker covering the display connector, which is right under here. Use a little bit of heat to soften the adhesive if you need to, it says. Oh, that came off real easy. Then we need to unlock the display and then pull out the connector. Oh, this one's tricky. Boy, I can't get under this. It's like I can't grab that pull tab, even with the tweezers, like it's firmly attached. So I'm gonna go risky and I'm gonna try to pull it out directly. Okay, I just grabbed from underneath and that did it. Okay, so now we're done with the underside of the board. So now's the more slightly complicated thing, which is heating the display on here and removing that. So that's where this eye opener kit comes in from iFixit. So they essentially want you to microwave this, then it heat, yeah, it just heats up the liquid that's on the inside. You place it over the display, which should heat up the adhesive to make it easy to remove. That's the general idea. Hello. I've heated the display adhesive. So now let's see if I can suction cup this bad boy and pull it up so that I can slide the spudger under. Press it down. No! Okay, press it down. I feel like I'm gonna crack the screen, which I mean, we're replacing it, but I don't wanna break nothing. I'm not getting enough lift here on the screen to actually Pull it out. I'm gonna microwave this for another 30 seconds and we'll try again. Send help, please. I haven't seen my, my mother, my, my kids, my cat. Uh, just help, I need help. 
My name is Walter Hartwell Wright. My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at uh, something something Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, he's coming. Back, back, back. I could hear you talking. I could hear you. Kept the door open. Heat, heat, heat. This is a lot warmer now. One minute. Pull up, guy. I can't get the pick underneath. Is the issue here? I can't get the there. Oh, aha! So now it's about getting the adhesive cut, but one of the warnings it gives is uh, just be careful because there is the ambient light sensor underneath and you don't want to go too far and cut that. An eighth of an inch. You risk damaging the display panel, ambient light sensor, or a fragile cable underneath. Oh yeah, you can hear all of the glue getting cut here. Oh, that's good. Now the right side, I already started heating that. Oh yeah, we're getting good cutting in there. And then the bottom of the display needs to be heated. Bottom edge, left edge. Okay, so you just go full square. Okay, got the bottom edge. Now let's try for the left edge. I don't think I heated the left edge enough. Struggling a bit. Last little bit. So it says to uh, lift the right edge up, opening it like a book. Oh, I did it. Okay, remove the display, it says. But there we have it. That's the backside of the original display. And then this is the new one. So this is gonna go in like this. Yep, and there's the ambient light sensor. And we got a motherboard dangling, just dangling. So now it's a matter of cleaning off the adhesive that's here, reapplying with the adhesive that I fix it sent, and then putting the display back on. So essentially in reverse order. Now this is the part of the I fix it repair guide that I don't trust because I don't trust myself. What I fix it wants me to do is take the adhesive strips and place them on the back of the display and then flip it and put it in. And then that way, all the adhesive should be lined up. I don't think I can do that properly because I'm not smart. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna line it up on the device and put it on the device and then flap the screen on and then press around the screen. That's my plan. I'm, go I'm going the opposite way. Each of the adhesives that iFixit gives you lines up perfectly with the top of wherever you're you're doing things. Moments later. Bottom side's last. Done. So now it's time to put this in. Press the display down. Oh, right, the motherboard's still connected. It's flopping around. But here we go. Okay, now it's just a matter of uh, going backwards and reinstalling everything. So number one is gonna be this panel connector to make sure that's in before we tape it back up. Kyler just brought up a good point that I can't, I can't test this until I put it all back. And so if I've flarbed up at any given point, blew out the motherboard or, you know, d the display itself is broken, not gonna find out until I go through the half hour effort to put it all back together. I can see why Valve doesn't want you to do this. This is not a necessarily viable strategy for anybody who's buying the cheapest Steam Deck. Like this, you have to be confident in your ability to not screw up. And I'm only mildly confident in that ability, so. Just making sure all of the ribbon cables are appropriately placed. The USB Type-C is aligned, and that should be it. Now it's the screws that need to go back up top. So I didn't actually go into this bag, but they include wipes for you to clean some stuff off extra Phillips heads for stuff, and then also uh, more thermal paste, in case you wanna reapply. But as mentioned, I'm not gonna reapply here because we actually have a plan for that. Cables, go back in. So I mentioned earlier that I was wondering how much of um, the repair guide is superfluous, like you don't have to do it, 100% of it is necessary. Like the audio cable had to be pulled out because that's attached to the underside of the motherboard and that's the only way to make sure that you're not gonna destroy that cable. Who knew? I fixed it, knew what they were doing. Me, I did, I knew that. I think I'm most worried about the audio cable and what I did to that. <laughs> I bent that the most. This is the display connector. So this going in means that we should have display. That's done, that's done. The battery needs to be done. Okay, I guess we can do the Wi-Fi connector next. Now we put the tape back on for the shielding. Cooler goes back on next. SSD, quick connector. Ha! Best idea Kyler's ever had. Battery is next. That should be last thing, technically. 
Oh, we got a light up there. I don't know if you saw that. And then I'm just gonna put this back on. All right, I'm not gonna put the back back on until I see that this is working. So this is, this is it. Are we ready? Tyler, are you ready? Oh, we got Steam logo, Steam Deck logo. That is definitely Matt. My fingerprints are way more reflecty though. Please still work. Oh, we did it. Let me put the back back on now. Okay, but the question is, does the touch screen work? It does. So the touch screen absolutely still works. That's good, but we have, we have to go outside. That's, that's been my main issue is I can see myself when I'm playing games outside. Oh, that is better. Um, it's not great. That is better for outdoor play. Like I can still see myself a little bit, but it's not as bad as this, which is super reflective. And like, I could clearly see the clouds. Whereas like now I can a little bit, but I can actually get full visual fidelity even in even in the outdoors. The matte screen's definitely nice. This was a worthy upgrade. So what's there left to do with the Steam Deck? <laughs> Liquid metal?